Today we're diving headfirst into the newly released Fortune's Run. Is it that fortunate or not? Wait, what, I mean, is it worth your time on Buckaroonies or not? And today's reviewer is the same as it always is on this channel. Limbreski! Yep, that's me. Now let's dive, shall we? They call the dying sun. It's been the room for many a poor girl. Mm. What's it is? So what exactly is Fortune's Run? Well, it would almost be easier saying what it isn't, because it is a whole lot of things. But to put it simply, I'd say it's a mashup of Star Wars meets Metal Gear Solid in first person, set in its own unique universe. You play as Mosa, a washed up ex-con extraordinaire. You get released from prison via corporate work program. And I mean, you will get the whole story presented to you from start to where you are now via memories, dialogue and happenings in the game. Now, it is a fairly easy story to follow along with, but it's still very complex. It offers a lot of different characters, things that happened before that plays a role in today and things that happens right before your eyes. But why it's easy to follow is because the game does a fantastic job at presenting everything to you often in very memorable ways, like the very intro tutorial of the game. Not only is it a tutorial, it also plays a major role in the storytelling of the game, and it is fully interactable from start to end, thus making it very memorable. Now before we jump into the gameplay, I want to share some of the game's inspiration with you, just to give you a good hint of what I meant when I said that it's easier to say what the game doesn't do than what it actually does, and to give you a more clear picture of how deep and well thought out this game actually is. So here it goes, Deus Ex and Metal Gear for the campy storytelling, level and encounter design, Monster Hunter and Dark Souls for the bosses, progression, stance meters, parrying and hit stop, Thief and Splinter Cell for the stealth design, Half-Life 1 for the narrative level design and tech demo style features, I Divine Cybermancy for the inescapable cycles of guilt, and of course many failed mid-2000 games like Vampires, Dark Corners of the Earth, Dark Messiah and so on, just because they had some great ideas. Ok, now it's time to dive into the gameplay. I will be trying my absolute best to keep this as simple as I can, as to me one of the game's biggest charms is its incredible depth and its immersive interactions. There is literally so many things you can interact with and deeply immerse yourself in. And part of the game's charm is to discover all of these different mechanics by yourself, like this one that I'm going to show you right here. The level of interaction and immersion exceeds most games prior to it, and that said, this game is mainly done by two people, which is nothing short of mind-blowing, considering everything that this game offers. Now, all of these aspects of the game is done really well, but it is also almost completely optional. If you dislike this stuff and immersion, you can more or less skip it completely. I mean, there are a few things you always have to keep in mind when playing this game, like which body part you apply bandages to and a few other things, but you can take it down to a minimum if you like. And in all honesty, I thought I would take it down to a minimum myself, as I usually don't like this level of immersion that much, but I saw myself just getting deeper and deeper into the game simply because it was so much fun. Now the fact that you can skip it if you want does not mean that the game gets easier, because it is not an easy game. It is very manageable at the easy difficulty, but there is no regenerative health as an example, and if you want to stock up on a decent amount of health packs, bandages and food, well then you better get get to exploring, and I mean a lot. As there really isn't that many health packs and stuff to find, making the game really encourage you to not go guns blazing and take it in a more stealthy approach, but the option will always be yours how you want to tackle a situation. Worth mentioning also is that all of this requires some inventory management. I can happily say that it is clear and quite easy to manage, everything is sorted into tabs explaining what each and every item is for. Thank you. 
Now this is not where the death of this game comes to a halt, oh no, every single aspect of this game has some form of death to it, and I mean more than just being basic. Let's continue with the combat. So as I said, it's completely up to you how you want to face an upcoming battle. You're always offered the chance to take it in multiple ways. For an example, you can look for a vent and attack from behind, or stealth kill everyone in the room, go guns blazing, throw in a grenade, blind them, go in with your fists, shoot an electric box that is conveniently close to where the enemy is standing. And these things I just mentioned are just a very minor few of the alternatives that you have in front of you before each encounter. As you might have seen in the footage rolling, I definitely took the guns blazing approach most of the time, but what the game has done to me is make me want to replay it. Replay it with the knowledge I have now, use my resources in a different way, and that feeling of wanting to replay a game? I can honestly tell you, it is a feeling that very few games manages to give me. So we made it pretty clear that the combat has some depth to it. But it doesn't stop there either even the melee system in the game is deep. I mean, you can combine different combinations with the melee system. You can grab, you can jump kick, you can uppercut people, you can do pretty much anything that you dream of. Maybe not anything you dream of, but there is some death to the melee system. I just, I was just looking for another word than death, but I'm, I'm too stupid, I can't find any. The melee combat is deep, okay? Thank you. Nonetheless, all these different mechanics that this game has in play is a very risky move for a small development team like this game has, but I can happily tell you, they nailed it. They nailed it big time with this one. Now another thing that is worth mentioning is that in the actual early access of the game, I found a total of 4 weapons and a couple of useful items, but in the demo, I actually found more weapons. It could be a case of me not exploring in the right areas, I honestly don't know, but worth mentioning at least. Now the movement is another aspect that has a lot to offer. With the movement you can wall run, crouch, crouch slide, jump, mantle things, wall jump, and I'm not sure this one fits into the movement segment or not, but it's really helpful pretty much anywhere in the game. And what it is, is that you can slow down time for a second, giving you the edge in both combat and platforming. Now the movement overall, it is a bit hard to master in my opinion, but with a bit more practice I'm sure it's very doable, it feels hard but not impossible. And in all fairness, I don't think that the current level in the game gave me much to work with when it comes to the movement in terms of wall jumping etc. <laughs> And that brings me to the level design and the puzzling in this game, which is, in my opinion, the game's weakest point. It's good, but if I have to point out what is the weakest, I would say the level design and the puzzling. It has all the verticality, covers and all the good stuff that is required for this type of game, but it heavily encourages stealth, which in return makes all these different movement mechanics not really useful at all, apart from platforming puzzles, which there isn't that much of in this level. And oh boy is the level hard to navigate. Multiple times I got lost and it took me a good while to figure out where I was actually going. And the maps that you can find in the terminals, well, they did very little to help me. Now, the level that is featured in the game for now is a round spinning space station. That design is really cool, but it definitely does not help in the movement aspect of things. And the same goes for the puzzles, especially the terminal puzzles, where you have to activate certain things. The game it gives you a fair amount of help in doing it, but a lot of it is up to you to remember words and manually type things in. And when you figure out how to actually crack the code, it just felt tedious to sit and type things. I mean, it works good for immersion, but it would have been so much better if the terminals just had buttons that you could press instead of constantly sitting and typing for yourself. Now, the audio of the game is absolutely spot on. The music is just right for the game and really brings the atmosphere up just a notch more. And everything from the melee punches to the guns all sounds really good. I got no complaints in that area at all. And the voice acting is also pretty damn good. I love the fact that so much is voice acted, even though you can hear at times it's not the bestest of quality, it's still very much passable and definitely helps with the immersion. There is even at times a foreign alien language that is spoken which could be debatable if it's good or not, but for me it didn't ruin the experience at all. I quite liked it actually. I can't hold him. We're not gonna make it, Zarina. We have to pull back now.
The graphics on the other hand, they are a bit of a different story for me. While for the most part, I do think that the game does look fantastic, especially the world and the environments. But I can't really say the same thing for the weapons and the character sprites. I just think they look a bit too rough and like they don't really blend in with the rest of the gorgeous world. It could just be a personal preference, but that's my opinion on it. In conclusion, I would really recommend this game, even at $20. But what I want you to know before you go and buy it is that right now there is a 2 hour demo out and a 7 to 12 hour main campaign mission, depending on how you play it. And that is all that you're getting if you buy the game today. It sounds like you're not getting anything, but as I said, the one main campaign mission that you're getting is long. And not long that it is jam packed with fillers, it's long like it feels good to play from start to end. And with that said, a lot more is coming. These are the words from the Steam page on what is coming in the future, with the first one being the mission available right now, and that is a fully simulated centrifugal space station, a train that rides up a cable to the heavens, a nature park built on a ring around a miniature star. No two levels are the same, always with something to impress. And that has me really excited for what's to come out. But note that this game really isn't for everyone. If you are looking for a mindless shooter to calm yourself down after a hard day's work, or a day at school, this won't be it, even on the easiest difficulty, but it does have a very advanced difficulty system where you can tweak it to better fit your playstyle. But my best recommendation if you're jumping into this one would be take your time, don't stress, explore, enjoy, and don't forget to quick save a lot. And whatever you do, don't miss these.